Are you ready for the death and rebirth super full moon on the 15th of November? If you'd like to be ready, hang with me. I have got a wonderful set of practices I'm going to share with you so that you can harvest all of the beautiful goodness that comes from this full moon. And by the way, I'm in my community garden so that I can be in the presence of death and rebirth. And I'm also with a little school and they're having their science lesson. So that delightful sound is children laughing. And I am so happy that you've joined me. And if you find this full moon report helpful, please join our community. I used to do these regularly on Facebook and I quit a couple of years ago and a friend asked me to start them back up again. So if this is helpful for you, please leave me a comment and let me know. Please subscribe. It does help the channel. And let's get into the Scorpio full moon, uh, Taurus full moon. The sun is in Scorpio. It is Scorpio season. Happy birthday to all my Scorpios. If you're a Scorpio, let me know. And Scorpio season starts about the 23rd of October and goes till about the 21st of November. And a full moon is always in the opposite sign of where the sun is. So you can always figure out what the full moon is if you know what sign the sun is. The opposite sign of Scorpio is Taurus. Scorpio is a fixed water sign. It's all about our emotions. It's about the hidden. It's about our subconscious mind. It's about secrets and power and legacy and things from the past. It's associated with death and rebirth. Death and transfiguration, we like to call it. It is also associated with three different kinds of energy. There are three kinds of Scorpios. We have the Scorpion, base level extinctual being. If you frighten a Scorpio, it will sting you. That's what they do. You know the story of the Scorpio and the frog. If you don't, leave me a comment and I'll tell you the story. I'll make a, a video about it later. But there's the Scorpion. Then the second kind of Scorpio is the eagle. I call them the consummate leader, the CEO. They are looking out at the big picture, taking care of everyone, managing all the details. Incredibly wise, powerful leaders. And then the third kind is the dove of peace, the completely enlightened, awakened being. Think of Christ consciousness kind of awakened. Think of all of the awakened beings from India. Enlightenment, love, unconditional compassion and love, all of the good stuff for humanity, for everyone. Scorpio is a powerful, powerful sign. And there are some powerful aspects going on that I want you to be aware of. And you know, lots of posts are going to focus on the daily planets, the ones like the moon and all its aspects. I want to focus on some outer planets that are having huge impacts on everyone. These are global shifts. And I want you to be able to harvest that energy so that you can build the most beautiful world that you can imagine. You know, Scorpio is the eighth sign. It's associated with um, infinity and power. It's associated with the past and legacy. Taurus is a fixed earth sign. Very strong, very stable. It's associated with food, which is why it's perfect for me to be in the garden. It is associated with all resources on the planet. It is associated with the earth and the tectonic plates. When there's a lot of Taurus activity going on, the earth can literally be shaken up. This is a powerful time for Taurus. There's some other aspects with Uranus and Taurus that I'm going to tell you about. So um, be careful. The world might feel a little shaken up, especially if you live close to a fault. Always be prepared. That's why I do these things so that you can be prepared. And I want to get you prepared for this super moon. Super moons are super close to the earth. It means their gravitational impact on the earth is stronger. We're going to have higher tides, higher high tides and lower low tides during a super moon. It's that big of a difference. And 
when we have a super moon, we have more energy being reflected from the sun onto us. We're getting that Scorpio power reflected to us by that beautiful Taurus moon. All lunations and all aspects in the sky have a productive side and a uh, less than productive side. This is why it's important to prepare so that you are harvesting the good stuff and not getting swept up in the difficult stuff. So beware that resources of all kinds could be up for discussion. Your harvest may be especially plentiful or your garden may take a turn into the underworld. When we go into the underworld, it's to self-reflect. It's to take inventory so that we can build something new, even more beautiful than what we just created. Full moons are when we harvest our creations, but on the opposite side of the full moon, we set up our new creations. A super moon is more powerful than a regular full moon. A regular full moon is really most active three days before and three days after that lunation. It's so one of the reasons I'm giving this to you early. I want you to be prepared for the actual day with some powerful rituals. A super moon easily has an impact that goes on for two weeks. And honestly, it can extend for six months quite easily. This is a powerful time. The other powerful thing that's happening is that the moon at the full moon is conjunct. It is sitting right on top of Uranus, the planet of surprises, the great awakener. Uranus can never really be predicted. No matter what we try to figure out about what it's gonna do, it'll just throw a little worm into the works to trip all that up. So it's better not to get too into the weeds with Uranus, but to know that it will be powerful. At the full moon, the moon is conjunct. It is sitting with Uranus. They can work together powerfully and they can work against each other powerfully. This is a time of great awakening and great change for a reason that I'll illuminate in just a minute that has to do with Pluto. This full moon is particularly powerful and important. There could be a shakeup on the planet, literally the tectonic plates. We could see issues with food. We could see issues with resources. We could also see great bounty with our resources. It's a time to pay attention and to use your mind well, because at this full moon, Mercury, the planet of the mind and of communication, is opposite Jupiter, the planet that expands everything. Jupiter makes everything bigger, sometimes indiscriminately. Jupiter can make your waistline bigger if you're having a Jupiter transit to your chart. Jupiter and Mercury together they happen to be in each other's sign. It's called a mutual reception. It empowers them even more. This is a time when your mind can be overrun with amazing ideas. You can talk too much. You can be inspired to write a book. It is also the sign of short, short distant travel. Whoa. And I just booked my tickets to California finally yesterday. It is a time that you may take an unexpected trip. You might buy a new mode of transportation. Lots going on. It's a huge expansion. The downside of this is it's a time when you can run on at the mouth and talk too much and say things that you have to clean up later. So if you think it's a tricky thing that you're about to say, maybe wait, wait a couple of weeks. Let this all settle down and change. The moon moves on quickly. And Jupiter moves about a degree a day. So it's gonna get itself out of this intensity. But remember, this intensity is to shake us up and to wake us up and to create a much more open, free, magical, connected world. One of the things I love about Uranus, one of the things I love about the power of Scorpio is they are really the juice that we can use to manifest our heart's desires. They are powerful energy. Look, it's all different gravitational pulls. 
You can talk about it all as energy. That's what's really happening when the planets are moving around. The gravity is changing. If you have any questions about all of this, please leave them in the comments. I've been an astrologer for 40 years. I'm happy to take up any subject you're interested in. Now, this time of Jupiter and Mercury working together is also a powerfully creative time. You may be overrun by creative ideas. Best to just start making a list because they're going to come like waves for you. Now, Oh, let's see. Don't, oh, yes. And, you know, I got, this is so important and powerful. I got notes, baby. Saturn at this time is stationary direct, and it's been for a while. Saturn is a big, heavy planet as well. Saturn is what we call the lawgiver. It often gets a bad rap for being a mean teacher, but Saturn is your best friend. It is here to help you grow and to transform. So it's a really good time to be working with Saturn. Saturn says, you came here to learn and grow in certain ways, and you came here to build a really stable foundation for yourself, and I'm going to hold you to it. Saturn's not particularly nuanced. It'll do it the easy way or the hard way. Me personally, I'm picking the easy way every time. I want to get next to Saturn, figure out what it's trying to help me do, and do that. Because when I do that, instead of it being hard, it's actually incredibly productive. Saturn is in Pisces. It is the sign that has one foot on planet Earth and one foot already out in the cosmos. It is a very spiritual sign. It is very much about the higher mind and higher thinking. Saturn is drinking in this energy. You may be overcome by such divine creativity that it's like, <gasps> your heart breaks open and you just have to create. You may be very involved in your spiritual growth and your spiritual work. It's a deeply spiritual sign. This is a serious planet. It's a time for us to take our spirituality seriously, to do our practices, to clean out what we know is not for our highest good. And that's really the ritual I'm gonna give you. It's a ritual for harvesting and cleaning out so you can make change. We got to clean out to bring in and birth the new stuff. Now, on the 16th, another incredibly powerful and probably tricky um, pattern is setting up. This is when the sun will actually be opposite of Uranus exactly. This could be a stressful time. Uranus is the great liberator. It breaks us free. It's always shaking up. It's the planet of the unexpected. It is the planet of the cosmic. And it is really being stressed, receiving all this solar energy from Scorpio. And things that are hidden are likely to come to light. We are likely to learn some secrets at this time. On the 16th, things could feel stressful. This is all going down in Taurus. Resources, literally the tectonic plates of the earth, food. So pay attention. This could be a time when things get tricky on the 16th. And the 16th and the full moon are really the opening act for what I think is the real power player at this time. Pluto, the planet that rules Scorpio, where the sun is, that is driving the full moon, is changing signs. Pluto doesn't change signs often. It only does it about every 20 years. 20 years ago, in 2008, Pluto changed signs. And then life got really interesting. You may re remember that about six months after that, we had the great financial meltdown. When Pluto changes signs, it usually begins with a crisis of some time, kind. On the 19th of November, Pluto is changing out of Capricorn where it's been for 20 years into Aquarius, out of the old world order into the age of Aquarius, the sign of humanity, the sign of goodness for all. This is what we astrologers consider the dawning of the age of Aquarius. 
We've been waiting for this moment. I'm so excited. I have so many plans for the age of Aquarius and I want you to make plans too. I also want you to be careful on the 19th. This could be the kind of dramatic shift that we all feel in some way. Be mindful, pay attention, take good care of yourself, your thoughts and your feelings. Scorpio is a water sign, it's all about your feelings. Taurus is an earthly sign. It is all about what's going here on your earth in your life. This is powerful. Harness this energy for your greatest good to manifest your heart's desires. And I have a practice for you that will help you do all that. At the full moon, any full moon, we are harvesting what we planted the season before at the new moon or some other time in our manifestation cycle. I love the moon cycle because it is a manifestation cycle and I am all about manifesting my heart's desires and helping you do the same. So when we come to the 19th, to this change, we're gonna enter a 20 year cycle, almost 19 and a half years. We will never live through Pluto and Capricorn again. It takes about 250 years for the Pluto cycle to come back to where it was. We are stepping full on into the dawn of the age of Aquarius. It is here, the sun has risen. How will you harness and harvest this goodness in your life? What things will be revealed from you, to you that you can choose to refine and rebirth and transform? This is a powerfully transformative time. I don't want you to miss it. One of the best ways to begin a full moon harvest is with a gratitude practice. Make a gratitude list. List everything that you're grateful for. And if you're struggling, you can check out the morning meditation that I did this morning. We did a gratitude list. That list helps fill you up so that you can do the hard work of going into your subconscious, of going underground and creating the release list. What is it time to let go of? What no longer serves you? When you reflect on the gratitude list, the things that aren't on that list are the things that you look at and say, is it time to bury you in the earth, to allow you to be regenerated, transformed and reborn as something that is more in line with my love and light and my heart's desires? Because if you're manifesting, you're manifesting your heart's desires. And your heart really only has one desire, and that is to feel good. Manifest from love and goodness. Take stock in what you have created. Enjoy your harvests, drink them up in your heart, and then reflect on what it is better to move out so that you can grow new things. The 19th is a powerful, powerful shift. There may be a crisis sometime in the future. Know that you are powerful and we all have within us everything we need to make our life and our world the most beautiful and loving we can imagine. I am so delighted to be back giving you these updates. I'd love to do more. If you have any questions, please share them. And don't forget to subscribe. It really, really does give the channel a boost. And this is how I will know that you're interested in more of these updates. Have a beautiful full moon in Taurus. Harvest the bounty of your life. And get ready for the amazing transformation of Pluto changing signs on the 19th. It may be earth shaking, but it will ultimately be for everyone's highest good because Uranus is there, the great awakener, saying it is time to electrify and expand. From my heart to yours, oh, it's getting really noisy. I'll see you at the new moon.